mouth and fancy seeing you here in June. A very welcome, my friends, and especially my enemies. Come in, sit down, grab a pew. Mwah. Right, your DCEU headlines this Tuesday are, and if you don't know, how can you even call yourself a fan? Anyway, just in case you don't, and I didn't mean that. I didn't mean that. Stay, stay, please stay. Right, James Gunn's The Suicide Squad adds David Dast Baldishun, now that's a mouthful, right, to play Polka Dot in The Suicide Squad. He did a great turn as Ag Agra Kadabra in The Flash. Yeah, they're starting, to, they're starting to cast Arrowverse actors. Why not Grant Gusting as The Flash, eh? I'm going to get hate for this, aren't I? Anyway, here's a rumour, exclusive Isabella Mona and Daniela Melchior top shortlist for Rat Catcher in The Suicide Squad. So there's lots of The Suicide Squad um, stuff. And I suppose it's up to your opinion if you think this is DCEU, whether you think the DC Universe streaming service original uh, shows are actually part of the DCEU or not. Anyway, a discussion for another time. DC Doom Patrol adds Devon Chandler Long as Flex Mentalo. Wow, I'm going to have to look that character up a bit later on. So obviously, we are still waiting for this big news about who's going to play the Batman. So I think it's very interesting that this casting could come so soon. They're not going to start filming to the end of the year. There's actually, they don't actually have to announce this till Comic-Con. So this is why I think this might not happen this week. If it does, if, it, if it's so early, this could actually mean that the new Batman could get a cameo in Birds of Prey. I think this could be one of the reasons why they want to announce it early, and they may even tease that. I don't know. Um, very, very exciting week if this happens. I still have my doubts. I just don't understand why you would announce it this week, why you wouldn't make a big deal out of all of this stuff at San Diego Comic-Con. If, if I was in charge of marketing, that's what I would be doing. So, you know, there's lots of news out there. Of course, we're, the DCEU is so being overshadowed by Avengers Endgame. And that's sad, isn't it? When you see how well this franchise is doing and how well Fager's constructed the whole thing, and you think how awesome the DC characters are, and how, how, are, we, how are we where we are? Now, the DCEU's had seven movies, and the gross is fantastic. It is a fantastic gross. But when you see what they're doing, and nobody seems to question the MCU, do they? Whatever they throw at us, we just take because it's the MCU. And it's absolutely insane. And I don't really want to go into the MCU on the DCEU daily. That can be a video for another time. I truly believe we will ultimately get there as a very successful franchise that more people love than hate. But it's a long road. You know, we just, I think we are heading back. We are heading, if you're a mainstream um, cinema goer, I think we're heading in the correct direction. I think um, Aquaman was, a, you know, a good one. I think Shazam was a really good film as well. So that is kind of going in the right way now. If you're a mainstream cinema goer, I think lots of people who are mainstream cinema goers really enjoyed those movies. So you'll say, yeah, but we don't want our films to be mainstream. We love um, MOS, BBS, Suicide Squad, and Wonder Woman, blah, blah, blah. That's true. But they also were really divisive movies. Look, I think all those movies were great. And I think that Warner Brothers should have held their nerve with the direction they were going. It was a very unique kind of tone we had with the DCEU. But it's done. It's gone. After what happened with Justice League, they're not going to go there anymore. You see, really, Justice League was the bump in the road. And who got who was dealt the biggest blow in in, in the Justice League debacle? Debacle. I can't even speak properly. The, the the Justice League debacle, right? Superman, my man, Superman, right? There he is over there, over there, over there. Anyway, right? I'm not doing well this morning, am I? But anyway, right? As a massive Superman fan, I'm extremely pissed off and frustrated. We are sitting here. When was the last time we saw Superman? 2017 in the Justice League, right? We still don't know if Henry Cavill's going to play him. We still don't know when, in, if in my lifetime, I get to see Superman on the big screen again. I don't know. I mean, I could kill over after this video the way I'm feeling, but it, 
if you think about it right, it, it's so despicable, so disgusting, and you just sit here and you think, no Superman, no Superman. Why? It's not fair. Well, you know, not to have the knowledge when his next movie is going to be. I'm not saying, look, we're not getting a Superman film um, this year, next year, maybe even the following year. That's crazy. I would have loved to have seen a Batman movie come out the same year as a Batman movie. Maybe that can still happen. I don't see how. We'd need a really quick announcement. But it's absolutely ridiculous. Do you know how it feels as a Superman fan to see Henry Cavill on Instagram talking about, uh, what is it, the witch take or whatever it is, right? And not talking about Superman because he can't. He can't. So he's got, to, you know, bless him, he's got to promote his next project. And I... I, I don't blame him for that, right? Um, but it's just really depressing to see him in public, in all these pictures. He, he's such a lovely guy as well, great Superman. And we don't know if he's ever going to play him again. He wants to play him. We don't know what's going on. The, you know, all this crap about giving Superman a rest. How can you give Superman a rest? How can you give the greatest superhero ever a rest? We want to see him on the big screen. He is nowhere. I think we'll probably get a casting announcement for Superman in Titans before we find out what's actually happening with a Superman movie. Come off it, Warner Brothers. Come off it. We need a Superman movie. We need him cameoing in movies, right? We saw the book, we saw kind of that bit, right? In Shazam. That is not good enough. I've defended it. I've said, oh well, scheduling reasons. It's not good enough. It absolutely isn't good enough. I appreciate how you did it. It was very creative to do it without having an actor to play him. But if you decided not to use Henry, you should have had Superman in that film, at least in a cameo, a proper actor with his face, by the way. Because, look, as sad as I would be if Henry's not going to play Superman anymore, I just want it to be done. I just want to know what's going on because it's extremely unfair. So let's talk about the release the Snyder Cut campaign. Do you know what? I'm thinking of actually just um, funding my own posters and everything and putting them out there and letting all the fans have them and T-shirts and all of that so no one has to pay for anything. It's really pissing me off seeing all this merchandise now and people are selling it. And, you know, it could be true. They could be putting it in a fund to forward the, the campaign and the stuff they're doing for release the Snyder Cut. But I'm a very cynical, um, untrusting fellow. And I don't like it, you know, I'll, you know, so maybe in the future I'll start printing my own release of Snyder Cut T-shirts. In terms of what's going on right now, not very much. Um, it's going on. It's happening. People are still hashtagging release the Snyder Cut. It's trending now and again. We're doing well, but we have to get bigger. And I've said this before. There's not many of us. There's a lot of us. Don't get me wrong. But there's not enough of us. So. How do we think it's going with Walter Hamada right now and what he's been doing with the DCEU? He came in, he came in and made some changes to Aquaman, that's a fact. Um, no matter what people tell you, what other YouTubers tell you, um, he, his first movie was Shazam. Shazam was a, a co-production co with New Line Cinema and Warner Brothers. Walter Hamada used to work with New Line Cinema, he's now in charge of the DCEU, so that was his first movie. Then it'll be the Joker movie, then all the other movies, right? So he's in he's, we've seen what he's trying to do. And as, as I said earlier on in this video, it's baby steps. We are really going to have to be patient. But next year, we have Wonder Woman 1984 and we have Birds of Prey. I expect both those films to clear a billion. So it was obvious from the very beginning that Shazam was going to be a very small movie, 90 million to 100 million budget. So it was never going to be a big box office hit. I thought maybe we could, if we were lucky, we could get to 500 million. And I think we all would have been extremely happy with that. But I think maybe if we're lucky, 400 million, maybe just under that. But again, because of the budget, it really doesn't matter. Making its money back and then some. Um, having a film that most people enjoyed, I think is more important at this point. And as I say, we're going to have to be patient with the DCEU. And also this confuses the issue of release the Snyder Cut because you ask, is this something they really want to do with what they're trying to do? But then if you have the Snyder Cut as a, a kind of a home release, it's probably better for them. They don't want to start confusing the issue unless they kind of call it the real Justice League and then carry on. 
I don't think they, they want to do that. I think they're making their decisions. They're moving forward. They're replacing some of the actors in the universe. And um, in a moment, I'm going to come back with some Ray Fisher news. Welcome back. Yes, I found the article. This is a video of Ray Fisher talking about his role in Justice League, talking about Cyborg, and not very happy with what was cut out. So this is very interesting. Um, I think the other part, which is something that we did get to see fully represented in the film, was the loss of Victor's mother, right? and that, how that sort of drives a wedge between them as well. Because not only has he lost his body, he's lost his mother, he's lost his ability to play football, he's lost... Uh, he, he sees himself as a monster, and uh, you know most of this is due to silence. Mm -hmm. True, true, true. So, what do you make of that? For for the release of the Snyder Cut campaign, that is absolutely fantastic because it shows an act. Look, he's talk he's out there talking freely now. Everyone is. I don't think these NDAs even stand anymore. Because everyone's just saying what the heck they want. We know that Ray's been a great, great friend to the release of the Snyder Cut campaign. His love for Zack is out there. Wasn't he the one saying, we love Zack, not wearing that T-shirt, we love Zack Snyder? I think he wasn't the only one. I think Jason Momoa was as well, wasn't he? So that's great to hear Ray saying that he was disappointed with what was cut out. And he's right. You know, Zack Snyder... And Chris Terrio really, in the Snyder Cut, really kind of fleshed out um, Cyborg's character. The point is, there is commentary here on what it would be like to kind of be disabled after an accident like that when you were an athlete, a footballer. You know, so to cut that out, again, is absolutely disgusting. But Joss had to in the end, and he, he shouldn't have done it, because this idiot, Kevin Sujihara, wanted a film that was just under two hours or around two hours. So the pressure was on to cut stuff out. You certainly shouldn't be cutting that out. It was absolutely ridiculous. So Ray Fisher, very displeased with what was cut out. And as I say, things like that flowing around the internet do nothing but good for the campaign, the campaign to release the Snyder Cut. By the way, before I jet off and finish this video off, happy birthday to our Wonder Woman, Gal Gadot. You absolutely empower every DCEU fan, every Wonder Woman fan, every little boy, every little girl. You empower empower us all every day. And we absolutely think you're fantastic and we hope you get all the presents you want. Well, you're probably worth millions of dollars anyway. Anyway, I will see you tomorrow for another DCEU Daily. Till then, goodbye.